Hello there and welcome to the Construction Revolution podcast. My name is Andrew Fahim and here in the show we explore the latest trends, technologies, people and organizations that are revolutionizing or disrupting the construction industry and are changing what the industry will look like tomorrow. Today on the show I'm speaking with Jonathan Harvey, the founder and CEO of the new job site. Jonathan has spent the past 15 years on job sites where he was constantly thinking of ways to build faster and safer with better tools and less waste. As a result, Jonathan founded the new job site in 2019 with the goal of enhancing the industry's ability to build beautiful, solid, and sustainable structures by improving the way that the structures are built to allow everyone to live, work, and travel in beautiful, plentiful, and sustainable built environments. The company currently offers a tool storage system which was designed using lean construction principles that allow contractors to achieve a clean, safe, and organized job site. In addition, they offer consulting and training on lean construction principles. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. I'm very excited to learn a lot more uh, about you and then about the new job site. So maybe just to kick things off, can you tell us a little bit more about the new job site um, and maybe what led you to start the company? Sure, Andrew, uh, my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, yeah, the new job site is a fairly new company. I started it uh, three years ago. Uh, I've got a background in uh, construction and business, so I was working in, for a GC, a large GC in uh, Western Canada, and uh, I thought that there was a lot of uh, issue that need to be addressed in the organization and uh, of tools and productivity, productivity solutions that the company could use to improve itself, so I started the new job site to address uh, those issues. Awesome. So I read about the new job site a little bit, and it said that it focused on increasing construction productivity by implementing things like lean construction. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about uh, what lean construction is and what it tries to address? Yes, uh, actually, we've got a pretty wide uh, spectrum that we focus on, but our main uh, aspect is uh, on-site productivity solution. So we work with a general contractor mostly and we help them improve their productivity. So by lean construction, uh, I mean, we use a lot of tools that uh, Toyota put in place back in the early 1980s and 1990s, but haven't been Im implemented in a construction company. So uh, one aspect that we do is uh, so we work with a general contractor that is uh, specialized in concrete. So we go of that and then we use a we take off a listing of all their tools every uh, tool consumable tools and uh, safety supplies that they use and then uh, we create a custom organ organize a trailer or tool storage solution for them to help them uh, visualize improve the productivity and improve the safety of their worker oh it's very interesting Okay, so what kind of benefits does a general contractor get out of this? Can you tell us a little bit more, maybe some of the numbers that they get? Um, what uh, disadvantages are there as well? Yeah, there's many, many benefits. Uh, they're kind of hard to quantify because you you get the productivity benefits from the worker first. So usually you can... Uh, actually, when I was working with that general contractor back in the days, I could see every day we lose an hour, two hours, sometime uh, looking for tools, looking for the right tools. We had guys le leaving the job site and going to the tool crib or the store to buy tools that they were missing. But when you have everything on site, everything in, in your view, you save you can save an hour, an hour and a half per worker every day. So usually on the productivity side, you save 10, 15% more productivity, more time on the productive front with uh, the, the use of our tool storage system. But also uh, the worker, uh, it's much more positive for the worker to So because you work in a more organized and cleaner environment, you're happier. You go to this, you don't get mad because you cannot find the right tool at the right moment. You just go in the trailer or in the C can, and then you find the right tools. You know what happened when you go in the trailer and then you cannot find something. 
you get mad, you get kick off your plan, you have to leave something, then your teammate that's on the job front is waiting for you and while he's doing that is not doing the, his job. So also there, there's a benefit too on the cost saving for a contractor because you, you, you first you find the tools easier and then uh, you know where they are and you don't go buy stuff that you don't need when you can see that everything is there at the job front for you to use. And Jonathan, in maybe in a collaborative environment like a job site where we have so many different stakeholders using so many different tools, do you typically see this system still working when you know two different people that don't talk to each other are starting to use the exact same tools? And how does this storage environment still work in, in such a messy environment? Yeah, it can get a little more complicated. Usually, like subs, they, they each have their own tools, and general contractor have their own tools too that they, they don't really share. But yeah, the, you know, a construction can get messy sometimes, so people lose stuff. But people they like to work in a cleaner and more organized uh, work phase. So um, by having their toolbox and their C cans more organized it makes everyone happier. But yeah, it can be difficult to get the workers to bring the tools back where they are and you use the system to its full extent. That's very cool. Okay, so Jonathan, I've been reading about this um, whole 5S concept. Maybe tell me a little bit more about those 5Ss um, and how do you guys use this to basically um, as a lean tool or something that would help on job sites? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, 5S, it's a, uh, it's a um, Toyota invi invited that system. It's uh, basically 5S stand for sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. So the first step is actually to sort the tool. So you get rid of everything that you don't need and you just keep everything that you need to do that particular job. And you, you organize them by the, the way the, the tools that use the most often has to be the more accessible and closer to where you need them. So the, the tools that you don't need, you put them lower and basically build a big uh, board, shadow board it's called, to, to make them, or, to organize the tools. So you sort, then you set an order. Like I said, you, you prioritize uh, by the, the time, the amount of time you use each tools. And then uh, you shine. So by having all the tools in your face, it, it helps you, you can, you clean them, helps you clean, clean the tools and fix them to make sure everything works properly when the next trade men's come and want to use that tool. So you shine, you clean, you clean your tools, you make sure everything is functioning properly. And then you standardize. So you, it can be color coding. For a for larger company, you can have a like, large company usually they have a multiple units that will do production. So they can have five, five, 10 trailers. So if you go from one trailer to another, you don't want to change the whole setup of the tools so you want to make sure everything kind of stay in the same place so say if you switch your workers from one job to another they walk in the, into the other trailer and the drills are exactly in the same spot on the left and then you can color code too so you can can be a little bit of paint or tape or whatever so you can have all the pursing tools and one color and all the concrete tools in different color and the wood tools and different color and on and on. So you get the basic uh, principle. And then sustain is actually to uh, keep going at that all that organization, all that cleaning. So it's one thing to have the setup and have everything in place, but the workers have to put the tools back in, in their place because then it's uh, just useless if you have a bunch of rack on the wall and all the tools are sitting on the top of a desk and just piling up, it's not going to be any faster. So you're just going to make sure you, uh, yeah, your, your workers put the things back in place, and uh, you you give them price or a little little something incentive to make sure they 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 follow on with the, that principle. 
Love it, love it. It's really the sustain part that's the, the, perhaps the most challenging because, yeah, for, for me here, we run labs where we set up very nice systems. And then um, if there's not, if you cannot sustain these systems for a long term, that's really the, the biggest, probably, the, in my opinion, the most challenging part. I don't know if you agree or not. Yes, I certainly agree, uh, Andrew, uh, because uh, the workers, sometimes they, they get used to habit and at the end of the day, they get tired and uh, just, they just want to go home. So they, they don't, don't, don't want to spend uh, 15 minutes at the end of the day organizing and cleaning their, their tools. But the next day, that's when you're happy you've done it and you show up to a nice clean work site and you find what you need. And uh, that's the most important. Yeah, absolutely. Jonathan, I also know that you're very involved on the training side of things. Maybe tell us a little bit about the gaps that you see um, in today's construction or in today's um, skill set for, for construction. What do you think is the main things that um, we really need a lot more training on? Well, uh, like uh, you know, uh, construction is going to be more, more and more technological, so uh, we need to teach the trade in the first place to, how to use computer to we, we need to let them know that construction is more technological they, they need to be able to use computer use robot and it has to be a part of their job to make their job more diverse by getting them to actually use those tools that make them pr more productive so technology mixed with trades i think it's a, a very a bright future for future trades people. Right, right, right. Okay, maybe tell us, uh, since you also have uh, a lot of experience on the consulting and training side, um, maybe when it comes to concrete, uh, maybe I'll start there and then we can get to tools. Uh, what new applications and improvements have you already seen and what do you think the future holds for, for the concrete construction? Mm -hmm. Concrete is a very uh, interesting industry. As you know, you've been uh, working with concrete for a long period of time. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the, one of the material of the future. Uh, right now, I'm working with a contractor too. We've been uh, doing a lot of work with the insulated concrete form, which is uh, fairly recent in uh, Canada. It's been around for 15 years about, and it makes work much more productive, but also, uh, advancement in the concrete production technology it's a big thing to to make the concrete more environmentally sustainable greener so there's lots of new material coming that will uh, be replacing the cement in some ways and lots of uh, interesting research and in, uh, all those kind of way and uh, by with concrete you can basically build any form so it's very hard to replicate so you can use the, the you just need to improve the way you build a mold and basically you can build anything so 3d printing obviously i'm sure lots of your uh, listener have been uh yeah. hearing about the uh, 3d printing technology it's getting uh, more and more present on construction site i think there's a new company in ontario that started uh, building houses using 3d printing technology and i uh, was uh, actually a uh, wall of concrete in uh, february this year and uh, one of the big uh, attraction of the show was cobalt international i'm sure you know about it they've sold uh, i think uh, 50 between 50 and 100 printers now and they're building a house all over so that's something that's uh, getting to a work site near you we still haven't used it with our customers and on site but i'm sure there's going to be lots of application coming out of that Interesting. Yeah, I know uh, uh, 3D printing does come a lot when we talk to a lot of our uh, our guests here on the on the podcast. Maybe tell us a little bit. Do you think something like 3D printing, for instance, can help with lean construction? Do you think that would um, advance it, or do you think that this is uh, more of a hindrance to it? Yeah, it's uh, at this point, it's, there's advantage and disadvantage to this method. Uh, Lots, I've seen people using it successfully to build uh, components for building. So the, if you want to build components that are way more intricate or forms, you basically if you don't have the mold limitation that you have with uh, traditional concrete. So if you want to build a curved wall with traditional concrete forming, you need very skilled carpenter to build that mold. But with 3D printing, you just program the computer and it's just going to do it for you perfectly the first time. 
I guess it's lean by definition in that sense. Um, Jonathan, you're obviously very excited about the newest technologies that are coming to job sites. Maybe tell us on the tooling or the machines or the technology side, what kind of things are you most excited about? What do you think will change our the way that we work on job sites? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work to uh, change the way that we build things because uh, construction has been around for a long time and uh, the material has been built for a long time to the, these huge mills that throw a bunch of two by four and uh, sheets of plywood out every day and those things need to be used. But uh, it's so the, the robots, uh, that that's one thing that I'm very interested about and uh, a uh, single task robot are something that are getting more used and used on the job site nowadays. You you can see that like Hilti is getting into the field. They have a jail bot. I think that it's a drilling robot. People use it for the ceiling and okay. I don't want to throw too many companies name around, but uh, there's a robots for excavator too that can help contractor to replace uh, operators because uh, you know it's a we got a big problem, uh, particularly in Canada, getting uh, skilled tradesmen to work. So everything that can uh, help uh, reduce the load that uh, those tradesmen need to to do every day will be very uh, good for us. Absolutely, Jonathan. Tell me a little bit about what's next for you guys. What are you maybe working on? Uh, tell me what's under the hood. Yes, uh, we've got lots of projects. So uh, basically, we work with our customers to see what's the most beneficial for them. And uh, uh, obviously, we're constantly uh, improving our tool uh, storage system. There's lots of new tools coming, and there's always uh, new uh, holders to design and produce. But also, uh, yeah, we want to test some products and uh, go more into the robotic side. So that's something that we're looking for the future. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, when you see maybe construction in, let's say, 10, 15, or 20 years, uh, what do you see as the biggest change that's going to happen um, for this industry? I think the, the biggest change is going to be uh, a lot less manual labor, manual installation, materials. Materials used on the site have to be improved to make it more suitable for a robot to install those materials. Because people do, just don't want to do the robot anymore and install like a hundred of sheets of uh, the g gypsums every day. And just we can use robot for that much more efficiently. So you just need to improve that. So I think there's going to be still lots of human on job site, but they'll, they're going to be uh, co-working with uh, robots and all kind of artificial uh, creature that will help them do their work. That would be amazing. Okay, that's that's a, a future that I'm very excited about as well. So uh, it's amazing. Um, well, Jonathan, I appreciate your time and uh, thanks for, for taking the time to chat with us today. It was really useful for us to learn a little bit more about your background um, and your, your company's background as well and all the cool stuff uh, and exciting stuff that's happening um, in construction. I'm very excited actually to have a tool storage system within my lab. I think that would be very beneficial to myself and everyone that works with me. So Jonathan, I appreciate it. I'm very excited about your future and the stuff that you guys are doing and uh, hopefully we will remain in touch sounds good andrew my pleasure talking with you and uh, just stay in touch well we can that organize for you <laughs> awesome thanks so much jonathan have a good day my pleasure bye <laughs>